This is what happens when language is separated from its cultural context. What's up, X-Learners? In this video, we are talking about communicative competence. Now, you may or may not have heard that term before, but if you have, chances are it came up in the context of learning a second language because it is from the field of second language acquisition. So if you're interested in finding out more about communicative competence, then keep watching. So let me ask you this. Can you remember a time when you blurted out a phrase, a new word, from a language textbook that you had learned in your language classroom to a native speaker and they just stared at you with a blank stare or a quizzical expression. Has it happened to you before? Because this is not an uncommon situation. It is what happens when language and culture are decoupled. When we extract language from its greater cultural context. If you want to communicate effectively with people from a different culture, it's not enough to just know the language. It's not enough to know the verbs, the grammar, the phrases. You have to know more about the bigger picture. So the bigger picture is the cultural context in which that language is grounded. All of the nuances and ambiguities that reveal so much more about that language and that culture tied to the history, the literature, the pop culture, the art, the songs, all of these amazing things that come with culture and language together. Communicative competence describes how we use language in a certain context in a given social situation. And if you remember the speaking model from Del Himes, then you know that different types of interactions, different participants will call for different ways of communicating. And that is related to this idea of communicative competence. In fact, the person who came up with that speaking model framework in the ethnography of communication, he's a sociolinguist and his name is Del Himes. Del Himes coined the phrase communicative competence and it's meant to be an alternative to what Noam Chomsky called linguistic competence. So it's not enough to know the linguistics. We also need to know the cultural component and that's where communicative confidence comes in. So being aware of communicative competence and what it means is going to help you become a better communicator in the L2, in the language that you are learning that is different from your L1 or mother tongue, right? The language that we grow up speaking, our native language. When we unpack a phrase in our L2, in our second language, we have to rely on what we call Metalinguistic awareness. Metalinguistic awareness allows us to decipher between figurative meaning and literal meaning. So there's the figurative and the literal. Now, the figurative meaning or the implied meaning is usually rooted in the cultural context. This is why when you're in a foreign country and you proudly display your language skills from your textbook, it's not always right. Chances are you're probably using it incorrectly in the given social context because you've taken out the cultural part. And if language is taken out of that cultural context, then it generally will be misconstrued or misinterpreted. That will cause a miscommunication or a communication breakdown. Take an idiom, for example. An idiom has both a literal meaning and the figurative or implied meaning. So if we were to just take the literal meaning from the expression, we're not really getting the meaning of the expression. The idiom's power just disappears. It's not apparent to us. However, if we understand the cultural context in which it is coming up, the history, the literature, references to art or mythology, then we understand the implied meaning and that is when we understand the actual 
meaning of the idiom. You already have communicative competence in your L1, meaning you grew up speaking that language and you are privy to the cultural context in which it is generated and the societal usage, right? You are aware of how people actually use the language, right? Language is a living thing. It's dynamic. It's not static. Think about when we started using the word Google, even as a verb. I'm going to Google it, right? Or let me Facebook you. These are words that we have as a society added to our vocabulary. It is now part of our language, but you won't necessarily see that in a textbook, now would you? So in your second language, communicative competence is more difficult, but not impossible to get. But it's more difficult because it is not necessarily evident and it's not taught in language textbooks. That comes with cultural immersion and with spending time with the people who speak that L2 and spending time learning about the cultural heritage, the history, the literature, and diving deeper into the language and the culture, not just learning the language that you've separated from culture. That is not how we achieve communicative competence. All right, so how do you improve your communicative competence? Well, the best way to improve communicative competence is through cultural immersion. Go to that country, interact with the native speakers of that language, and try your best to soak up every little thing that you notice, all of the differences and the cultural ambiguities perhaps, and questions you have about language use and expressions. Put all of your antenna up and soaking in and absorbing everything new and different and exciting. And by doing so, you will start to subconsciously develop your metalinguistic awareness, which is absolutely incredible. So as an adult, we can do this. And if you haven't already done so, I suggest you watch the video about how adults can also be really good language learners and that we have actually a tremendous advantage. So you're developing your metalinguistic awareness by paying attention to the idiomatic expressions and paying attention to how the language is being used and in what cultural environments and in what conversational environments this is coming up. And also pay attention to the nonverbal gestures and the intonation. These are all really great cues into how language is used and you have that wonderful cultural context that you're surrounded by in which the language is grounded, and this is how you increase your communicative competence. And by doing so, your language learning process will also increase because now you are building your metalinguistic awareness, you are aware of actually how that language is used in society, in culture, in real life, in other words, and this will lead to a richer, immersive experience. It'll also lead to more natural interactions with native speakers, and you'll start to pick up on things that you wouldn't otherwise if you were just reading from your language textbook or just in your language class. Now you have to go out and explore in the real world and you have to do the work. Pay attention to the inconsistencies between what is in your language textbook and what is around you and what is surrounding you. And when you go abroad, you're not gonna isolate yourself and keep yourself in your little bubble with your L1 speakers. You wanna go out and interact with as many native speakers as you can and use the language and take risks with the language and listen for inconsistencies with what's in your language textbook that you learned and what is actually being said and how they use the language. That is how you're going to increase your metalinguistic awareness and your communicative competence. You're gonna pick up the language more quickly and you will be aware of the sounds and you'll be able to produce the sounds more accurately and your pronunciation will improve as well. Suddenly, things are just gonna start making more sense to you and you will find that you'll use expressions and collocations and words that just sound right. And you might not even be able to explain why that is, but you know that it just sounds right or it sounds better. And so you start to develop those 
native-like instincts. And this just catapults you into a whole new level of language learning. And only through these real-world interactions with people of your L2 will you start to understand the unspoken rules of the language based on observations and trying to take risks with the language in that way. So what I mean by taking risks with the language is trying your best to use the phrase or the new expression accurately, but you might not always get it right at first, but you need to figure out when it is right and when you get the feedback from the native speakers. So try it out, even if you make mistakes, even if you are uncertain. So don't just be afraid of making mistakes with the language because then you'll never improve and then you won't learn if that phrase is actually supposed to be said in that context, or if this expression makes sense for talking about that situation. You will never know unless you take risks. So what's my challenge for you, Explorers? I want you to start picking up on the inconsistencies, start looking for them, actively searching for these inconsistencies that you notice there's a gap between what is taught in your language textbook and what you hear in the real world. Now, let's say you're not in the country of the language that you're learning, that's okay. Now you can probably find some videos on YouTube or you can listen to some songs in that language, find some movies, films, maybe some newspapers online, some blogs, anything where there's this authentic material action happening. So I want you to search for the differences and you'll notice that there is actually quite a gap. You will be surprised by the number of differences. So by developing this metalinguistic awareness, you will start to improve your communicative competence and that will increase your language learning skills and you will become a better communicator in that language that you are learning. You just wait and see. All right, Explorers, that's it for this video. Thanks for choosing to spend time with me today. I hope you learned a little bit more about communicative competence. And if you want more information about it, you can check out the article I wrote, which is in the description box down below. So have a look at that for some more information. And I will see you in my next video right here on Exploring. Happy Exploring.